Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carloop, EV, and Warbox. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Tesla Tom here. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm super excited to introduce the new 2024 updated Tesla Model 3, which Tesla Australia has kindly allowed me to drive for the next week. I'm going to take you on a trip across Sydney now uh, in this Tesla Model 3 in real time, end to end drive. Let's do it. Okay, so before I head off, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that uh, are common questions about the 2024 Tesla Model 3. And firstly, there are no ultrasonic sensors that I can see along the front of the vehicle. So just confirming that for you all. You know, that has been asked a few times during the media event walk around I did earlier last week. And similarly, nothing on the side of the vehicle either over the uh, front fender nor along the back either and I can't see anything either on the back of the car and how lovely is this deep red ultra red they call it so lush there you go confirming no ultrasonic sensors okay so this car is currently charged to 83% showing 324 kilometers and let's have a look at the software. So it's currently eight kilometers only on the odometer. How good is that? It's basically brand new. And let's have a look at the additional vehicle information. So it is showing lithium iron phosphate, which means that it's the rear wheel drive vehicle and AMD Ryzen latest um, entertainment processor. Doesn't say whether it's hardware three or four, it just says full self-driving computer. It has been software updated though, running 2023.38.9. And look, isn't that nice? They've set my profile up as Tom already, but because they've added this car to my Tesla account, my TTLF profile is already set up, ready to go. So let's press that and look, my seat and my steering column settings all return to me as I had for my previous Tesla Model 3 and our current Tesla Model Y. How good is that? And just confirming it is a rear wheel drive vehicle, no badging there. Otherwise it would say long range dual motor or underlined of its performance. And Tesla have given me permission to actually peel off this uh, film. It's my privilege to do this. Oh yeah, how nice is that? So good, so good. Okay, so another question that's been asked a lot is whether there is a front bumper camera. And as far as I can see in this light, I cannot locate one. I've looked all over, including the intake grill definitely cannot see a camera in the grill. I've looked all over unless I'm not looking closely enough. But not that I can see everyone, so there it is. And that's what the indicators look like when they're on. I've just got the hazard lights on to show you. And just putting the brake pedal on for you too. Okay, that's what it looks like on and off. Okay, so there are several ways to start the new Tesla Model 3. So easiest way is probably just to tap up here. And you see is park reverse neutral drive. So put on the brake and then just press drive and away you go. That's the easiest way. You can also use the screen so you can slide up in the direction of travel. So if you want to drive, there you go. Another way to do it, reverse. And then just tap to park. Okay, but the coolest way to start the car is actually using auto shift out of park beta. So when parked, automatically shifts to drive or reverse when doors are closed, driver's seatbelt is buckled and brake is pressed. So, uh, foot on the brake, seatbelt on, tap to activate drive, press to drive, and away I go and I didn't even have to shift gear. All right, everyone, I am almost ready to go here. Super excited. Cannot wait to show you as I untangle my seatbelt. Mics are ready to go. And as I said, uh, my Tesla profile has been loaded into the car. Thanks to Tesla connectivity. All right. Um, yeah, let's do it, hey? We will talk as we drive. So uh, press and hold brake and then choose direction on touch screen. And I'm just gonna swipe up. That is how you change gear. And I am off. I am off, everyone. I am so excited. I cannot wait to share with you. Oh, <laughs> see that muscle memory I wanted to indicate left. But I'm going to have to press the uh, steering wheel. 
button. How funny is that? Less than five seconds into the drive, I'm already making that mistake. That camera looks good, nice and wide. Calibration in progress, so hopefully we can get some autopilot footage um, before before we uh, finish our drive today. Same thing, I wanted to indicate right. That's, that's hilarious. Um, let's drive to Chatswood, Westfield, because I want to show you, without the uh, sensors, how easy it is to basically right use the um, use the vision only uh, sensors, I guess. Let's scoot out. <laughs> this will take some getting used to without stalks. Like I've been driving for how many years now? Uh, let's see, got my license at 18, so oh my goodness, 25 years of my life I've used stalks, but today, no stalks. I'm just going to head straight here. So a bit of urban driving just through Alexandria in the inner city and then straight up onto the freeway. Um, yeah, so all my Tesla settings were loaded onto the phone straight away, which I was very happy with. Just having a little play. So for those of you um, who want a more thorough walkthrough, I have already done one um, early one during the media day I was invited to. So make sure you check that video out. I'll see if I can um, do another little one later today. I'll definitely do one with Joy, my wife, um, her in the back, and see whether she can watch YouTube and stuff in the back seat while the car's in motion. I guess that's something would be of interest, right, for those of you with kids or just passengers in general. Oh, yes, I didn't use the stalk. I didn't shape to um, do it. And then back into this lane. I, it, it knows. I mean, I knew that was from... Uh, my previous Model 3 and the Model Y I've got currently where it knows if you've crossed the lane to stop indicating but that's, it's just, it's just mind-blown. I've been driving a lot of press cars the last few weeks so it's so nice to be driving a Tesla again I have to say. Um, yeah, it's, it's lovely. Um, yeah, I mean if this is your first time seeing a Tesla video then yeah sure I'll try and take you through some of the basics but this is kind of like Google Maps but integrated obviously with the Tesla environment. I love how they've got traffic aware stuff too, so if you know it's a busy road. If 200 meters, turn left onto Wyndham Street. Yeah, so this is the base variant, uh, rear wheel drive. So um, I'll have a listen to the sound system later. And I'll try and give an indication of what the suspension and insulation is like. A lot of that is subjective. Oh, see, I went to, <laughs> went to go again. Um, a lot of that is subjective, so... Um, yeah, I just, you'll just have to take my word for it. Can't comment on the suspension just yet because it's early days. So what happens in a situation where I want to get rid of the indicator? Just press it again and it'll disappear. So calibration progress, you can see, I don't know, you probably can't see, but there is a little steering wheel icon and that determines how much time I've got left to uh, to have the autopilot calibration going. It literally only has eight kilometers on the road on the odometer, so like this is a super fresh car. And they gave it to me in ultra red. Oh, how good is that? How good is that? They're looking after me, Tesla. Thank you so much, Elizabeth and the team at Tesla. Shout out to you guys and girls. Yeah, feeling very much loved today. So, you know what? Now's a good chance to actually see if I can do a reverse park test. Okay, so there's a parking spot behind me. I know it's a wide spot, but still, still, it's a good first test. Those cameras look good. I think they're upgraded. Uh, I can't tell. And then, what do you do? Tap forward like that. And then tap to park. So that's it, isn't it? That's pretty much it. Pretty basic. I thought there were lane uh, gear changes up here, but I just can't seem to find anything up here. I mean, unless I was mistaken, I can't see anything up here. So, um, I'd love to have another better look. Look, it kind of, ooh, I kind of want to go up to swipe up to, uh, to go reverse. I don't know why. Maybe because in the old, and in, in other stalks, other stalks in other cars too, up is reverse and down is drive. So, we'll have to kind of get used to that. That will take some practice. Like for me, up has always been reverse. 
shifting down as drive. So actually it's the other way around. I guess I've just got to think of it as the direction of the vehicle. So I want to go back, I swipe down, I want to go forward, then I sort of swipe up. Yeah, okay, it's just a bit of muscle memory. Has anything changed in the driving mode? All this stuff here. Standard, charging limit, okay. I want all the autopilot settings on, but I'm going to have to wait till it's calibrated, so no worries. We'll just wait and be patient. Okay, all good. Yeah, accent lights on. Let's put auto. I guess in the day it's not going to come on, so that's the lighting across the front of the dash there. See, my, my phone's already there activated. How good is that? Automatic. Lock rear display. Yeah. 24 hours, kilometers, PSI, good. Trips, why don't we revert? Uh, Oh, I've got to go. Okay, we can just leave that as it is because it's a pretty new car anyway, so yeah, nine kilometers, I'm happy with that. We can get a good efficiency test during the week we've got this vehicle. Try and do a, a DC charging test as well, supercharger. Hands at nine and three. And you know, it, it kind of makes sense, really, if you think about it. Do we really need a stalk for the gear change? If that was pretty straightforward with reverse parking, right? It's kind of just here. Like you don't really use the the gear shift that often anymore in automatic vehicles. Definitely not in EVs. It's not that important anymore. You don't upshift or downshift anymore when you go driving, right? Haven't done so in a long time with automatic vehicles. Okay, I'm gonna stay quiet just a bit and you can hear how much insulation in the vehicle, how good it is. Look, I've got to be honest, the roads here are crap, okay, like they're terrible around the inner city, around Alexandria, because there's, it's kind of light industrial. So look at this one. Like that pothole, or that divot in the road previously in my 2023 Tesla Model 3 would have just been quite bumpy. And just back on my point about this area, because there's, there's so many trucks and utility vehicles, vans, utes, whatever, they rip up the road constantly. So, like, it's just a rough road, right? So that kind of movement, even at slow speed, would have been quite rough. The Model Y is a bit better because it's got that suspension control now. I think they call it soft suspension, whatever. But the Model 3s definitely did not improve, even with my latest 2023 Model 3, which I sold earlier this year. That, when it went over the bump, was much better. And I could feel that dampening. So already it's improved. And hopefully, it's, obviously, we'll go for a drive on the highway and give you guys a better idea of what it's like. In terms of insulation, I mean, all four windows are now double paned, or what do you call it, laminated. Two sheets of glass now, so I'm sort of stuck together. And um, yeah, it's, it's a lot better for insulation, sound insulation. Uh, okay, that was a bit bumpy, but understandable, quite a bumpy area. I think it would have been a lot worse. I still want to do this. I bet you when I'm stressed trying to do evasive maneuvers, I'm going to want to do this, but there's nothing here. Nothing on the steering column. How funny. So this is going to be an end-to-end -end drive, unedited. I'm not going to cut anything so you guys have a good idea of what's going on. And from my understanding, all the efficiency gains have been just from increased and improved aerodynamics as you saw in my media walk around video, um, things like better design of the front of the hood um, and then redesigned lights. Uh, we've got better wheels, got a diffuser at the back now, better lines through the car. All those things have helped reduce the drag coefficient down to 0.219, whereas previously it was 0.23. So pretty incredible for a car this size. And it's gained I think about 5 to 12% range, something like that, just from those um, improvements. Nothing to do with the battery. It's still running on the uh, 60 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate, as you saw as I walked through before looking at the computer of this car, all the specs. So that, that, that doesn't change too much. Um, so I suspect the efficiency will be better than what it was. I was getting 135 watt hours per kilometer or 13.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in our road trip to Brisbane. So uh, we'll see what it looks like uh, on this week that I have this vehicle for. OK, 
Okay, so just coming through to the inner city now. It's the uh, central station ahead of us there. Give you a little bit of a tour of Sydney. Okay, we'll do. Just coming through Surrey Hills. Got to be careful with speed limits. I think it is quieter, you know. I mean, Sydney is pretty busy, right? Okay, so that wasn't central, I apologise. Central's further up. We're kind of still in the Redfern area. But that is the main railway line anyway. Heading into the city. So when you've got the foot on the brake, then you can sort of start switching the gears. You can't sort of play with that when you are obviously in motion, which makes sense. See the air conditioning, I'll just show you that. So you've got now heat and cool functions. And I think you can now independently move the passenger side. You can hold to turn off as well. How good is that? Tap to turn on. Lovely. And the uh, blind spot monitor remains. I think it is better. It seems uh, like a wider field of view. And then you've got, you've got ventilators. I better, yeah, okay, better pay attention because I don't know this particular area too well. Turn right here, hands are nine and three. I'll try to find a roundabout for you guys as well. We can do a roundabout test. Okay, so straight on from here, let's play with the aircon a bit more. So with the auto seat, so if I put auto on, see it wants to ventilate my seat. Now I've got the cool function as well. But then if I want to heat it, I can go heat and then I can heat it automatically too. But if you just press auto, it's like, what is it today? Uh, Temperature-wise, 26 degrees, so fairly warm-ish day. Not super warm, but still, oh, my butt is cool. Yes, I can feel it. Like through my butt and also my lower back. That's lovely. Oh, it's rising up to my upper back now. Let's go even, even colder. Yeah, three bars. Oh, that is nice. Oh, <laughs> that is luxury. Wow, this is going to be so good in summer, let me tell you, because like, it can get quite sticky and I don't tend to sweat that much, I'm not a big person, I don't get too warm usually, but I still get a bit sticky wearing shorts in the heat, the heat of summer, so I, th I think this is going to be really good. And now the seats are better too, like they've got holes in them, even the ones at the back, even though they're not ventilated, but yeah, it's so good. Oh, you guys are going to love this. It's going to be so good. Yeah, that's nice. I don't need that much cooling today. It's not that warm, so put it back to one. One's good. One's like lovely. Okay, so going through speed cameras. Mustn't get a speeding ticket with a press car because that would be super embarrassing. Haven't done it yet. Touch wood somewhere. But yeah, it's good. It's good. And calibration is three quarters done so fingers crossed by the time we hit some sort of motorway which is not too hard in Sydney uh, we will be able to turn on cruise with autopilot see I didn't muscle memory that time and the indicators went off by itself getting there getting there I'm wearing sunnies everyone sorry it's it's quite glaring so hopefully you can still see my eyes these aren't polarizing so you can probably see through Oh, that ventilated seat is so good. This is so nice. There's an old or current gen Model 3. There. Let's see if anybody spots us. Anybody who is a Tesla aficionado will spot us. Maybe they'll be surprised to see a Tesla Model 3 2024 update on the road. Some people are saying it looks like a Mazda. Yeah, that's fair. Even in this red, particularly in this red car color, I mean, it's it's not a bad thing. I mean, Mazda's a great cars too, right? With the new lights, I guess. But from the back, surely it's a Tesla. It says Tesla, T-E-S-L-A. Okay, so we're gonna turn right very shortly. And guys, the suspension's been good, let me tell you. 
it's nice. It's really nice. There's one. Yeah. I mean, that's still a little bit stiff, but that was quite a deep manhole. There's another one. Better. Definitely better. I mean, I sat in more comfortable vehicles, like, oh, okay. Like, the Polestar's got a nice suspension, but this is, I mean, this is much better than before. I don't have any, like, objective measures to tell you to use and to measure with, but just subjectively, I'm telling you it's better. Uh, I know other reviewers have used, like, apps to, um, whatchamacallit, to, uh, to sort of gauge it objectively, but I don't have anything on me at the moment. Okay, you see how the car in front of us, that's a car in Gen Tesla Model 3, and the lights, the rear lights cut off halfway through, right? So the boot opens up with half the lights with it. Whereas this Tesla Model 3, as you saw in my Media Day video, the whole light fixture, both sides, open up with the boot. So that's the difference. It's kind of a more streamlined design. I think um, we were told too that it's better for manufacturing. It's easier to produce that on one piece in the factory. So I guess anything to help efficiency of manufacturing to help bring the cost of the cars down and bring the cars out sooner, I would think. All right, so we're about to hit the freeway. It hasn't quite calibrated yet, so we might have to do another test later with the autopilot on. But if perchance it does click over, then we'll do it. But that is the reality of a brand new car. It is what it is. Okay, bit of a bump there again. Some of the road noise is coming through. Harbour Bridge. Let's accelerate a little bit. There we go. See, I think I've got to turn the indicator off because it doesn't see the lane markings. That's, I mean, the roads don't have very good lane markings here. Put my sunglasses back on. Can I get in front of this bus? Oh, of course I can. We're in a Tesla. It's an electric bus too. One more across. Are these buttons? I think they're haptic, I think. I mean, there is a bit of a depression, I think, when I switch, la switch lanes over and press the indicator. I think next time I do this, I'm going to have to uh, take a better note and pay more attention to what happens to the, what happens to the, um, the button. Let me just get one more across, and then I'll have a look carefully for you. Go. Oh, no, I had to look at the road, sorry. I think it's haptic. I mean, the depression is just from the plastic going in a bit, but I think the haptic doesn't seem like it's a physical push. Probably easier for manufacturing too. So on this side, we've got autopilot and cruise. We've got the cameras, windscreen wipers. Oh yeah, that's, that's something I need to look at actually. And then the voice activated stuff. So, washer fluid, oh, I'd be ashamed to use the washer fluid, right? Wreck the windscreen, oh, but I've got to do it, don't I? I'm going to do it, let's do it. Okay, so that's how you do it. I just press it once. So once just does that once. Okay, then you've got the wipers there, automatic. I, I don't know whether they've fixed the wipers because there was an issue with the... Ooh, it's melted scent from the wipers. There's an issue, still an ongoing issue with the wipers, automatic wipers with um, autopilot. Don't think that's been fixed yet. That's a software thing. Okay, I can't use cruise on the freeway. This van wants to come in front of me. Because it's not calibrated yet. We're close though. Hopefully when we reach later on, we will uh, be able to turn them on for you. And there it is, folks, uh, for our interstate and overseas visitors and regional New South Wales uh, viewers as well, I said listeners, I mean viewers, um, this is the Sydney Harbour Bridge, south and heading north, so northbound approach, probably our most famous famous landmark, oh we're so close to calibrating, but then I'm probably going to have to stop the car to turn autopilot on, that's okay, we can live without it, we should be able to do some freeway driving. That is the Sydney Harbour Ridge. Pretty smooth. 
be smooth. Again, I, I reckon it's not a huge improvement, but definitely an improvement. It's like probably very similar to the Tesla Model Y suspension now, which is better than Model 3. Still firmish, but better. And acoustics definitely better too, just subjectively. There's less coming to the cabin. Let me briefly play some music. Just enough so I don't get a copyright issue. Let's put some background music for you. Bass. Yeah, hard to tell, sorry. I need something with bass. Okay, stick to the speed limit. Okay, we are close to calibrating that. See, this is where cruise is really handy. You can sort of set cruise on, and then um, you just forget because yeah, it's it's I actually find it harder to um, to match the speed limit. Oh, we're so close. That round circle, that blue round circle. Oh, are we good? Yeah, I probably have to calibrate, as in turn on autopilot. Yeah, that's all right. Should be able to still put on cruise though. Hmm, okay, maybe a second. Just take some time. We'll have to stop the car somewhere and then um, activate it. Yeah, it's pretty good on the highway. I almost forgot I was on the highway. Normally this would be really noisy. But there's a bit of a rumble, yes. Yeah, a little bit. But definitely smoother. Like, almost feels like I'm driving the Tesla Model Y. That's, that's the level of smoothness you can probably expect with the new Tesla Model 3. I'm only speaking subjectively, of course. And look look how rubbish the road is currently because they're ripping it up for construction and redoing the Rowinga Freeway. Let's have a drain. In 300 metres, keep right to stay on M1 towards Chatswood, Epping. Yeah, that's pretty good. Bring the cameras up. There we go. Again, I couldn't see a front bumper camera, everyone. I did try. I looked really hard. I couldn't see it. I know they upgraded the, the vision recently uh, with um, with a software update, so I can't tell. Ooh, that was bumpy, but that would be bumpy in any car. That's bumpy there. Big pothole, didn't feel it. Okay, wants me to go up this way. Oh, I thought of putting my hand up there. All right, let's accelerate a little bit, indicate out. One more cross. So clever. Indicator goes off by itself. I like that. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I've forgotten how nice it is to drive a Tesla. <laughs> After all the press cars I've had, like no disrespect to the others, but this is just lovely, isn't it? This, this minimalistic look. Just the one screen. And this wireless charging pad, which I should probably take advantage of. Mm, there we go, just stick it there. It's charging away. There's the Tesla card it came with. Uh, autopilot. Let's see if I can know. I thought I could just do a sneaky park and drive again. But, but if we do another red light, I could probably do that just to. Um, yeah, just to turn on the uh, auto steer for you. The next red light, let's see if I can do a sneaky. Turn it on. It 
It's a light button too. I wonder if that's for like flashing high beam. Let's put that on. Oh, it is. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, okay. Why are we doing that again? I'm going to do voice activation. My butt is too warm. Commander understood. Okay. It's too warm in here. Temperature decreased by 1.5. Bring temperature up to 21 degrees Celsius. Yeah, nice. Okay, red light. Let's do this. Let's do a ninja. Stop, park, activate. All right, tap to park. Let's do this. Autopilot. Auto steer beta. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Press the drive. Well, I'm not going yet, so I'll just leave it. Has that improved at all? It's pretty similar. <clears throat> so 80% charge, it's telling me 310 kilometers. Okay, auto drive off. I know this is only the rear wheel drive vehicle, 0 to 106.1 I think it is, but look, that's enough really. That's pretty quick for like most urban conditions. You'll beat most cars with the lights, trust me. And it's a rear-wheel drive too, so uh, less, well, no torque steering. And very good handling. Just a very good all-round vehicle in general. Okay, so see that time I actually miss... Oh, there's someone in that car, in that lane. That time I actually missed press, so I didn't actually get, get to press it fully, so just be careful, you just press it a bit. A bit firm, not, not too hard, just firm. Alright. So I don't think I'll get a chance to do autopilot now, but I will do it. There's a, there's a bit of a main road coming up after I check out Chatsuit Westfield for you. That's probably the, the best example of uh, a tight, tight area using now camera only sensors. As opposed to ultrasonic sensors, because that's that's a concern, isn't it, everyone? I know that's a concern. I get a lot of comments. Do they still have ultrasonic sensors in Australian delivered cars? I don't know. This is. I assume they would send this vehicle down under. Like, why would they send a non-Aussie spec car down for our showrooms to review, right? Surely this is this is the vehicle. It's always been that way. The showroom vehicles are the spec that you'll be getting delivered. Okay, can I try? Goodness, how do I activate autopilot? Oh, it's just one press. What am I doing? Oh, okay. So it's just this button now to press it. Interesting. I that had nothing. It doesn't do anything. Okay. My apologies, everyone. Right. So, so now that single pull is uh, or single press is now autopilot. That was a software update recently, wasn't it? Traffic aware cruise control chime. Lane bud departure avoidance here. Turn that off. Don't like it. Interesting. Okay. So I can show you a little bit, at least at low speed. Then you can like adjust how closely you want to follow. But even at this low speed, let's see. It normally has a tendency to hug the right side of the lane. So I will always have my hands on the wheel, by the way. I've never really trusted any ADAS or driver assistance systems in any vehicle, not even Tesla. On the highway, I might just relax a little bit, but definitely not in urban driving. Okay, so it switches off when I cut out. Ah, oh, now let's go here, Archer Street. Okay, I know my way now, so I'll just end my trip. And I will find that car park to circle up for you. That will be a good test of the camera only sensors for you guys.
Yeah, I'm feeling very honored to be uh, able to bring the, you this footage. I would think this is probably one of the first, you know, real world Australian roads, Tesla Model 3 2024 update test drive. So giving you my real world perspective, um, as you see unedited, All this stuff is still the same, isn't it? Nothing has changed too much. Curious with the aircon. Yes, yeah, somebody asked about, uh, what's it called? The biohazard, what do you call it? Um, HEPA? Whatever, you know, the biohazard uh, aircon setting. It's not there, can't see it. The fire defense mode, that's it. That's the word I'm after. It's not there. Not like in Model Y, so there you go. Okay, so we are now coming very close to Chatswood and I know Chatswood fairly well so I know where to go to show you some tight corners to wind my way up a shopping centre car park. You know you want to see this. You know you want this. Let's use this one. Going up the ramp is no fun because it skips all the, all the, uh, all the ramps. So I'll go from the very beginning and you can get a good idea. You like watching me struggle, don't you? You know you do. I'll struggle for you, so you don't have to. Oh, someone's looking, someone knows Tesla. Yes, that is the new Tesla Model 3. Maybe someone will take a photo. End up on some Facebook group somewhere. Okay, let's uh oh no, this is a single unbroken line, but I'm sorry. I have to get into this lane. Otherwise I will not be a popular driver if I cut too late. Okay, so we want to turn left here and you see, you might see all the ramps up there, so that's what we're going to try and achieve. Go up the ramp a couple of times and then see how easy it is or how difficult it is without the ultrasonic sensors. That's what you want to see, right? I bet it is. Yeah, see Chatswood's a really busy area and normally a lot of the sound would come through. Like I feel very cocooned in here. Wow, look at the resolution on that thing. That has to be new cameras, surely. Like, that is incredible. That's absolutely incredible. That has got to be new cameras. The previous ones were not that good. Well, we... I might have to take the, um, the USB stick in there. Oh, it's not recording. The extra camera recording started, okay. Hopefully it'll catch something. Okay, so let's, let's wind our way up. Let this pedestrian through. Okay. okay, let's do this. Sunglasses off. Have to concentrate. Bump. Ooh, that's nice. That is better than before. Because that used to be quite bumpy. There's a Mazda in the red. No, it doesn't look like that. What are they talking about? But the red is very similar, that deep red. Here we go. <laughs> Weekly that is. Come on. That's hilarious. That's camera only. Um, it's not showing you how far away it is from like the pillar, which is what I used to like. Uh, like if I get closer, which I don't really want to, but no, no more sensors. No more sensors. How sad. How sad for me. Okay, I'll do one more. And then I'll tr try and do a park job. Just one more for amusement sakes. Actually, you know what? No, I don't want to go one more because this is this is where I want to come out. All right, let's do let's do a parking job. Let's do a parking job. Uh, okay, there's one next to the BMW there. Okay, so pillar and a car. Good test. So um, do that, and then we reverse this way. Yes. See how the sensors go. 
I can hear the reversing camera, a oh, reversing noise. Yeah. Look, there's no more sensors. It's not telling me how close I am. I don't know about that. I kind of miss that actually. I miss that a lot. I do miss it. I quite like being told how far I am away from the wall and pillars and stuff. Oh no, I'm sorry, I apologise. There it is. Okay, I wasn't close enough. No, there it is. That's pretty good. Okay. Cool. All right, and down I go. All right, I have to pause for one sec because my wife is calling me. All right, so, sorry, that was not quite end to end, but we got there. It's the brief cut just to take a phone call. So that's good, good to know. It's a bit wiggly, but the sensor, well at least the camera is telling me how far away I am from the wall. Okay. It's definitely insulated, it's nice. Perhaps this time was not a good time to test, given it's school pickup time, but not too bad. I think all the mums and dads have gone. Now I will just exit this car park down this ramp. Oh, this will be good. This ramp will be a good test for traction control. It's not raining today, but still, be a good test. Sometimes it can slip. It's quite a steep gradient. See the wiggly lines? It wasn't that wiggly before, so that's clearly a camera thing. Surely with software upgrades and updates over time. There you go, centimeters away from the car ahead. All camera based too now. Must be a bumper camera, although, must be right, surely. I just couldn't see it. The camera up here on the windscreen surely wouldn't be sensitive enough, I would have thought. Unless, unless it knows how far away, I mean it's already set distance right from the camera to the bumper. It's already like factored into in their calculations. So I suppose it could be done technically. Oh, that's a nice, nice movement down that ramp. Here's a bump, oh here's a roundabout. But this one's easy because it's like a left turn. Don't need to stress too much. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Okay. Left here. Try and find another roundabout for you. Later on. So smooth, seriously. It's so nice. It's like a spaceship. That was a bit stiff. So this um, traffic aware cruise control is handy also for traffic jams too. So I'll see whether I can activate it at low speed. Once we get going again, you'll see what I mean. Just follows the leading car. You gonna come in? Yep. In you go. Okay. 
Okay. Even at 12 kilometers an hour, it activated. I'll put my sunnies back on. So you see. Okay, it's like inching ever so closely. I've got a bit further. A bit closer to the beamer. Ah, one pedal, so nice. Can you activate it at zero? Oh, you can. All right, so once the traffic light turns green, we'll see um, how sensitive it is, whether it can take off by itself. See the pedestrian? It's that gentleman hopping into the, uh, the ute? The ute, sorry, the van. Okay, lights turn green. go. No, it doesn't go off by itself from a standing start. Not on this occasion. It's okay. Let's see across this intersection. Not too bad, given that there weren't very many lines through the intersection. School zone, but um, it's got 140 anyway. Ooh. See, autopilot's not just for the highway. It's good for Oh, there's a leaf. Will it be council? Um, it's good for traffic jams too. Oh, well. See, evasive maneuvers. I actually wanted to reach for the stalk again. And that's just practice, I think. Okay. But yeah, I mean, when you're under stress, right, this is where old habits come back. So there's something to be aware of. Cut in front of me. Nope. I'm in a press car. Can't go too fast. Is it 50 yet? Must be 50. You can scroll up, right? Yeah, you can scroll up by one or like roll up by five or ten. 50. So roll down by fives. Yeah, okay. And then. So up here you can see whether it's using regenerative braking or it's using the power from the battery. So let see it's regenerating even just on cruise and autopilot going downhill. Maybe I should take account of how many times I've wanted to um, use my hands to indicate, I reckon at least five, five times in this drive. How long have we been doing this for? 44 minutes. 44 minutes I've want, been wanting to um, use my hands down to half battery. Right, now, Definitely want to show you this bit because we've got a bit of quote unquote highway driving coming up, then I can use autopilot properly at 80 kilometers an hour at least. And then we'll do hopefully a roundabout test. That'd be good. And then, yeah, I think that'd be it, really. And then we'll get Joy in the back to. Um, show you the controls on the screen when we're driving. Yeah, that'll be fun. You see how the aircon is pretty good, pretty strong just back on this. So I like how now they're both independent of each other, which is great. And you can turn one off now. And the rears as well. Yeah, seat heating just for the side too, by the way. I think somebody asked that in a comment from the previous video. Okay, so now we're on a major road. We can at least go at 60 now. 60.
Okay. This road does become 80 later. Car's braking ahead of me. Nice smooth braking to follow. Nice. Now sometimes I need to cut out of this lane. Yes, I do on this occasion, so I might just cancel cruise. And indicate out. Nice. Even with the base of maneuvers, I was all good. Nice, nice. Activate autopilot. Is this single for auto? Yeah, let's see. Okay, single, sorry. I keep double tapping, sorry. For, force of habit. Single, now it's just autopilot. Presumably you can switch to... Yeah, that cruise, is, that cruise setting in the autopilot bit if you just want cruise control. Nice. So, I think everyone... Um, if you've been driving a Tesla for a while, I think most, in most situations, this will just feel natural to you because um, it's the same infrastructure, right? Same, um, same platform, really. So you won't, you won't be too fussed by the new, new drive system. I mean, you just got to get used to this, you know, the gear shifting, and then obviously, as you saw within this drive, I'm already kind of used to pressing the indicators. Now, the one thing, of course, is the uh, what do you call it? The um, roundabout and indicators so that's like to be fair like I know we've got a lot of roundabouts here but I mean in Sydney there's not that many roundabouts to the point where it would be a deal breaker I think as you've seen I've not passed one roundabout yet no one okay one I indicated left out so I mean I know there are probably some areas especially the new housing areas where there's a lot of roundabouts so I shouldn't speak for others but certainly where I live up here there's not too many Okay, so we will probably use autopilot very soon. Okay, so once we hit the 80. Okay, let's put it on 75. Let's scroll up to 80. Nice. Stay in this lane so I can monitor the autopilot. So smooth. Now this road is not the smoothest, but this is pretty good. The new suspension has helped. I can tell you that because I use this road like up to sometimes four times a day. This is the Roseville Bridge. And this is not a smooth road. So this is actually pretty good. I can tell you from experience. So when you indicate after a second, or even not a second, the autopilot will disengage. Engage it. This is just basic autopilot, by the way. If you've got the ex, um, what do you call it, enhanced autopilot, then you can have automatic lane change where it'll change for you. Of course, you have to ask yourself can you justify the price? Okay, so can I? Oh, my front camera has disappeared, so now you're stuck with me here. Just the screen camera to tell them we've been recording. Now, can I match the speed? Hmm, how do I match the speed? I used to be able to match the speed by pulling down on the stalk. Now there's no stalk. So I'm going to have to find a way to do that, to match the speed. Do I need to tap the screen from now on? That is frustrating. That's one frustration. There's probably a solve to that. I'm sure somebody who's worked it out can tell me, but yeah. See, for example, if I scroll up now to 80, if I want to, yeah, that just disengages it, right? If I wanted to like go back to what it was, like to the, no. I'm gonna have to tap the screen, aren't I? So you tap the screen and reach down again. So that's not as good as it was. Okay, so I think my camera's either run out of battery or recording space so i think i might sign off here for this bit and then i'll come back to you with um some more footage of uh, joy holding the camera so be right back
So that's coming through the um, Reef speakers only, is it? Interesting. Okay. okay. It's very very loud out the back, up the back. So you can't hear it at all. So it's not it's not annoying you because it's quite loud up up the back. See if I can get it up again. Ludicrous feed is currently sponsored by the car loop. So you just need to reset it and go back. And then the audio comes Hey everyone, back. it's Tesla Tom here. Thanks for joining us. Have a great to the first viewing of the 2024 Tesla Model 3 update. And if I just walk around this way, George's going to follow me. And here we are. We've got three new Tesla Model 3s updated for 2024. Well lit. That looks like a new LED light, but it's very different to before. Uh, same box there. Okay. Just need the belt. That looks really luxurious. And there is so there we go. You can use this. Oh, look at that. What the hell is that? So you can like direct independently where you want that airflow. Like this one too. Coming up to a roundabout, stalkless model three. I'm going to be turning right here. So first movement is easy. I'll just indicate right there. Then this is a two-lane roundabout, so we have to exit the roundabout. So once I cross my hands, I'm going to indicate out. There we go. So I switched hands doing that, and um, that does take a bit of practice. You've got to think upside down all of a sudden, but managed. Alright everyone, that's it from me, Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for watching me drive across Sydney in the new 2024 Tesla Model 3 update. Thanks again to Tesla Australia for the opportunity to test drive this for the week. Stay tuned, I've got some more content coming up. Until next time, happy charging.